one slice, we come on the show, we talk about the sermon in real life perspective and let you know what we think about whatever it is that Pastor Balaji has been teaching. Hello there and welcome to another wonderful episode of Slice, where we get to take snippets and fractions of all that we preach in this sermon and just break it down. You know, at Harvesters, we love to touch and change lives. And today we're going to be talking to one of a very special changed life. Trust me. You want to hear this testimony? You want to hear her story? My name is Nene Rufus, aka, come on now. And with me on set, I have our very special change live. Her name is? Timmy Tokwe. Nice to meet you, Miss Timmy Tokwe. And also, I have one of our very amazing and amiable um, women leader here with me. Her name is? Yay, nice to have you on my set today. Okay, we've been having a series, we've been having a series for some months now on dealing with frustration in relationships. In our service, we had an encounter with a fantastic lady where she stood up to, because the service is an interactive service and she stood up to share her story and it was very remarkably touching. Let's watch a snippet of it now. What did you learn from your last marriage? What good lesson did you learn? The good lesson I learned from my last marriage, I felt, because when I got married, the good lesson, yes, felt because I don't have parents, my in-laws, I took them as mine. The closeness was much, there was no station at all. So I felt there was a lot of, let me use the word, see finish. And it ended up running my marriage. Is that the good thing you learned or the bad thing? That was the bad thing. I asked you and the good if thing. I should Are you noticing the pattern? How she's focused on what is... Did you see that what I'm saying? My sister, let me say something to you. I understand the pain. But the more you focus on the bitterness, the more bitter your life will be. Do you love your daughter? Very well. You do? Yeah. If but you're not married... You preach to hold on, hold on. Don't say any buts. Do you love your daughter? Uh, yes, I do. That's something that came out of your marriage. But without your marriage, will you have that daughter? But I'm not treating her right presently. You see the I challenge? She's going to go back. You see this? She's going to go back. I, I understand what you're saying. But I want to see the frustration. I knew because you can see it in the face. Every time something good comes up, she will find a way to cancel it with something that is bad. So you're very unhappy, I can tell. Yes or no? So, Miss Timmy Tope, tell us, tell us how life was before your encounter with us. Okay. Before my encounter with life at Avestas, things was terribly bad. Because growing up was very difficult. Because I lost my mom at the age of seven and I lost my dad in 2007. Mm. And I'm the first child, I have two younger brothers. So growing up was really difficult. So at some point, I had to go into a lot of things just to survive, you know. There's no parents, no, no guardians per se. I will not say there's no guidance to Taliban. Not really, you don't know. You know, in life where people said, okay, there's no parent anymore, but I'm still going to stand like your parent. It's not gonna be the same like when you have your parent with you. So it was really tough and difficult for me. I had to survive, not just me trying to grew along with my two little brothers so at the end of the day i felt i got into a relationship where i felt okay you know going into that relationship i was like okay i found love mm. i couldn't get love from my mom or my dad mm. but i found this guy that showed me love i into that relationship for eight years wow. so along the line i got pregnant the next thing is okay let's get married since i'm pregnant mm. so actually the pregnancy leads to what bring about marriage in the relationship so I got to finally introduce him to my um, external families and I met his parents. So along the line, we got married. So the marriage was going nice until the family came up showing different kind of attitude and character. So what made me left the marriage was violence, domestic violence. Oh, wow. He began to beat you. Began to be that was the first time, actually. Wow. That was the first time. And I think it was based on the influence of his mom. Because mm. a lot has been happening in the marriage before then. Mm. So... 
to cut the long story short i had to leave the marriage even at that moment i don't know where to start from i did but i just felt the best thing for me to leave because i already have a child so and i feel and even when i had that child my plan was okay i'm in this marriage i'm not financially i'm not doing fine mm. If I can get any other child, I want to boost my financial life. Mm. If I can think of bringing any child into the world. After leaving the marriage, life was totally different. Because at that point, I felt I've lost it all. Wow. I, I just felt, okay, now life is meaningless. Life is worthless. Life doesn't even worth living. That was immediately after I left the marriage. Wow. Because it got to a point, I started misbehaving to the point that People started telling me I'm living in my head. Because wow. the way we are now, if you are sitting next to me, the way you are sitting now, I didn't feel anybody sitting to me. Wow. I felt I'm the world. only one wow. in this world. And I see everybody around me as often as me. Wow. That's what, that's how I felt. Like, that's why any reaction you're going to get from me is going to be aggressive. Mm. Because I'm lost in thought already. So once I just hear a voice, I don't know, I don't want to know what you're talking about. I'll just flare up. Oh, like wow. the person will now feel what's wrong i'm not fighting with you now calm down because mm. i'm i've just felt this world is just myself mm. nothing nobody is living this world with me so i started living that kind of world like i was totally depressed so lo and behold i used to be a muslim because mm. when i was growing up my dad was a muslim though my mom was a christian even though she um i lost her when i was young but i can still remember some parts vividly because then anytime she take us to church there's always issue in the house between her and my dad because my dad is a Muslim. Mm. He felt you can't take my daughter to church. I'm a Muslim. I'm this. I'm that. Don't take my child to church. So after the death of my mom, I continue my full life Islamically. So I and my brothers we had to continue practicing that Islam. So and again, one more thing that has made life worthless for me was when I look around me. When I go here, I see everybody with white teeth. I'm always questioning myself. Mm. Why is my own different? All this question, I don't have anybody to share or discuss it with. Because wow. I believe I grew up in an environment where your problem becomes something people gossip, gossip with. Mm. So I had to keep all my problems to myself. You don't speak to anyone. I don't speak to anyone, that's, especially about my problem. That's a tool that the devil uses. Yes. Once he wants to attack a life, he will I isolate see. you first. And you can hear her saying she started to feel worthless. Because that was the thought that the devil had put in her mind. Sorry, go ahead. At times, even in school. I hear people saying, I'm not sure she's fine. Why is she behaving this way? But I don't care. What I care about mm. is this life I'm living alone. Wow. Nothing. I don't, I didn't see any other person. No even I have mindset. a sex that I have yes. then. So I don't even, I can't even apologize because I felt, what's the big deal? This is who I am. Wow. But you know, you see what's alone. so funny is that she actually embodied her experience. Actually, like yes. you took it on as this is who you are. And she's and saying it, this is it. Like, this is who I am. This is who I am. So you took your experiences and you made it your identity. Exactly. Like what Pastor B was speaking exactly about in church. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's oh. the number one le reason of frustration. Yeah. Number one reason. So when I left my marriage, the only thing I don't want for my daughter was, okay, now she's growing. She's having white seeds. And I don't know the major reason behind mine. And even... It, as in, I have a low self-esteem because of mm. that. Like, I don't want to open my mouth to talk in public. I don't want to talk to this person. I don't want to talk to that. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I just keep to myself. I kept quiet. Mm. So, I started the journey of, okay, I don't want my daughter to have the same teeth as mine. Mm. So, it was along that line I get to find out that the major reason for my teeth was because my mom took Chichasa cleaning capsule, that red and yellow capsule, mm. while she was pregnant. So that was the reason. So the doctor said, okay, even if I'm having 10 kids, none of them can have the same teeth as mine. Okay. That the only solution for mine is to get a veneer done. So I think that part, I was like, okay, it's fine. At least I know the reason why I'm having exactly. these teeth. And secondly, yes. I'm very happy that my daughter yes. can have the same thing. So that chapter is closed. Imagine me being in university where we're about a thousand in class. I don't have close power. Wow. I like, I don't have Throughout friends. The of the I'm still in school. I just started the DLI program. So I don't have friends because even the school, I just thought, okay, marriage didn't work. Let me go to school. Mm -hmm. So even going to the school, I like, you know, I'm just doing, it's not like I'm doing, I don't have reason why I'm doing this thing. You don't have a strong why. why? That's another thing that Pastor Bollard will always talk understand? about. What is your why? why? So how did you, how did you find your way to have vestas? Okay. Well, what was like the, what was the main 
breaking point. Yes. Because obviously you had embodied all of this and it had become your norm, right? Mm. But something must have made you want that something different. So yes, what was that main changed. pain point that was like, okay, this is it, I need something else? Okay. What happened? So you get to a point, you know, I would just be in the room alone. So at times I would feel no friend, no family, mm. nobody. Even my daughter at, time, at that point, I didn't find that as my source of happiness anymore. Wow. Even any little thing, I would yell at her. Any little thing, I would yell at her. So you were really depressed? I was depressed. Like, totally depressed. There were times, like, I would feel it myself that this is not you. Wow. I will not be thinking of myself way back. Mm. So I will not be asking myself, what has changed? Mm. Why am I like this? But I'm finding it difficult to change. I'm finding it difficult to come out of that shell. Yeah. So I think that night I was just in the room, I was lying down. So I was just feeling very soon you start going to church. Mm. In my head, I'm like, oh, maybe the next guy I'm going to get married to will be a Christian. Maybe mm. that way I'll start going to church. Because at that moment, I believe nothing can make me, even the, I, I can remember vividly, mm. there are people I told like me, I can't practice Christianity. Wow. I'm a Muslim. But all of a sudden you were having a feeling that something was just in your heart. Yes. My heart, that I'll start going to church. I'll start going, mm. I was like, okay, maybe there's one Mr. Wright that is coming <laughs> that wants to take me to church. Okay, lo and behold, that Sunday morning, I was lying down on the bed, I was watching the TV. So something just came, I didn't even know I would open my wardrobe mm. and I picked a dress, I wore, I left my street. I went out, I saw, I, I saw a girl, her name is Blessing. Mm. So I saw Blessing, I said, sorry, because I just moved to the area I'm staying now in Ogba. Okay. So I had to ask the girl, sorry, where is, um, because I'm very familiar with Redeemed Church. Because mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends that attend Redeemed Church. So I asked the girl, is there any Redeemed Church around there? The girl said, no, I don't, I, I don't know any Redeemed Church around there. I said, okay, you, where are you going? She said, she's going to church. Mm -hmm. Where is your church? She said, just back here, it's not far. I said, okay, let's go to your church okay. together. I don't know how. Your steps are ordered. <laughs> so I had to go to the church with the girl. So from there, they always call me, hey, come to the church. So why going to that church? Just at that moment, mm -hmm. and now faith, my problem just began again. Because hmm. once I sit anywhere like this, I will see one spirit dragging me, another one dragging me here. You, you are very shameless. Why will you go to church? Wow. You were born into Islam. Hmm. You are going to, as in, my the head enemy will be... was trying to attack your My mind head will be right aching. Wow. There is no day I get home from work. I will have to take drug. Hmm. Even I will be on bike. I will be fine before I will just be on bike. This spirit will just come. Shame, shameless person, you are going to church. Wow. What are you looking for? You're what are you doing this? In, in my head, my God. that it will get to some point, my head will be aching. When I get home, I'll take drugs. My God. I'll just tell my daughter, I don't want anybody inside, I want to sleep. Hmm. That's, how, that's how I will feel. So the depression was almost getting physical, it was affecting your health. It was affecting my head. Yes. Like my high bag were literally big. Oh People will see me, ask me questions, what's wrong? You are stressed. No matter how many thousands of people ask me what's wrong, <laughs> nothing. That was wow. always my answer. So luckily for me, in the morning I woke up, instead of me to get bed and go to work, I was I just opened my phone. I was on Instagram. Mm. So I just found Pastor Balaji praying. Come on now. So I just stopped. So everything he preached that morning, NLP, so mm. was just about like like somebody talking to me directly. Mm. So I started feeling in my head again, I started asking myself, ah, who told this man my story? <laughs> you know, like I was, the Holy Spirit I was not fine inside. Even it started to get into me outside. Hmm. So I was like, who is this man? So I shall manage this, listening to him all through. From that, I think I joined around 6.40 that very day. Okay. And the service ended around 2.8. Okay. But to my surprise, that day, like I went to work, everything was fine. Hmm. I didn't have to get home, take drugs. Hmm. You know, at night, I was now lying down. I was now asking myself, today was different. Come on now. What did I do today that is different? You had the word so that now again. brought me back to, but you listen to one service. I didn't even know it's called LNLP. Yes. I haven't started following Pastor Balaji then. So I was like, I listened to one man on Instagram on today. Yes. Okay, I was like, I didn't even know maybe it's everyday program. Hmm. So I had to go to, I had to open my Instagram instantly. I was looking for Pastor Belaji, I couldn't find him. <laughs> How will I get this um, prayer point again? I couldn't find him. The next day, I couldn't join the prayer point because when mm. I opened my phone, I couldn't find, I don't know the link, I yes. don't know the undo. So that very day, I went to work. 
I still felt the same way I usually feel. Oh, Sorry, yeah. you did or you didn't feel? I felt that same way. That tug of... That tug of dragging. Oh, okay. I felt that okay. tug of dragging. So you felt better the day before? The day before. But when you didn't listen, listen you felt bad, bad again? again. Okay. I felt bad again. Okay. Friday, I couldn't join NLP. Saturday, I couldn't... I was just living my normal life. I went back to the way everything was. So on Sunday, I just, even while going to that church at the back of my house, I was just going to the church, like something was just leading me. I don't know my reason of going there. Mm. I don't know why I'm, I want to be a Christian. I don't have any good reason. I just know I wake up on Sunday. I don't want to stay in the house. I put on my dress and I go. Mm. So I was in that church that day. I think the pastor at the church now requested that we should do a video. Mm. So immediately I brought out my phone. I wanted to click, click um, Snapchat. I click um, Instagram. So I just stopped past. I just saw Pastor Olaji preaching again. I was in that church. I had to click to Pastor Olaji preaching. Okay. So immediately, the first thing I did, I had to follow him, mm. and I had to make sure what was the name of this person. Okay, Balaji ID. So I was at that church physically, but I was listening to Pastor Balaji <laughs> on my phone. So immediately, I was listening to him. You know, that piece of mind mm. Come on now. just came again. Come ah. So I started questioning myself in my head. How could this person? I've not met him. I don't know this mm, person. Mm. Just listening to him, I'm feeling that peace of mind, like inner peace of mind. Mm. Are you sure this are not my parents in disguise? I kept, I couldn't even wait for their service to finish in that church. I had to leave that. I had somewhere to attend, so I had to lie. May God forgive me. Amen. I said, I have to leave. So I just left the service. So I was on the road while going home. I was still listening to because I didn't go with AirPod or mm. Epis. So I kept on watching till I get home. Mm -hmm. So I was like that very day, my peace of mind, mm. I was just literally happy. So early in the morning when I wake up, I didn't even know the program was 6.30, but immediately I beat because I had to go to YouTube because I went to, I, I strolled through his page. Mm -hmm. I had some of his previous service where he talked about a lot of his um, poster on YouTube. Okay. I went to YouTube, I went to search in the night mm. before I sleep. I'll put, I'll connect to my Bluetooth, then I'll just slow it, I'll lie down, I'll listen to it. By the time I wake up in the morning, the feelings was different. So mm. things started changing for me um, drastically. I was like, ah, what was happening? Okay. So it was even during one of the YouTube channels I watched, I now found out that that program I watched early in the morning is mm -hmm. NLP. That's now. always 6.30 to 8 a.m. Yes. So since then, once it's 6.30 like this, even if I don't have that time to watch all the old, <laughs> Is um, all the whole news on IG. Mm -hmm. That Pastor Bolaji, I must, I must look now. for that data. Priorities, I want to listen. Guys, so I now took it as my early morning dose. Mm -hmm. I need to take it before I go out. Come on now. I need to take it before I go out. NLP is your early morning, morning dose. dose. So I, I need to that. take it before I go out. Mm -hmm. Me and Pastor Bolaji is on live service on Sunday. Oh, be, it <laughs> be it first service. Second, third, um, relationship talk, fourth, everything. <laughs> I'm always there. Because you know when you are watching something and you are getting that, because yeah. you can buy everything in the world, you can't buy peace of mind. Preach. yes. No matter the yes. amount you have, you yes. can't buy peace of mind. Yes. So for me to now be connecting to this and I'm getting my peace of mind, mm. what am I looking for? I'm telling you. So I don't think I'm looking for anything as well. At times, after everything, even when that attack wants to come, mm. I'll just put on my headboard, pa, 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 YouTube. Come on now. I'll start listening. So immediately I start listening to him on YouTube. I'll just feel calm mm. again. All that thoughts. Because before then, and I started doing my research. Okay. When I go to school, you know, even if I don't have that friends, I still have some people. When you sit now, during yes. the lecture, you guys still talk. Mm -hmm. I don't know this. Let me see. They're dictating uh, what line. Let me see. So I think I now had this lady. We sat together. Goodness. So we're just talking then. So I don't even know. Okay. She was just saying, ah, I want to go out. I need to attend to something online on WhatsApp. And I said, what's that? She's, she's a worker in a church. And I said, what church? And I said, Avestas. Come on now. Your steps are literally big ordered. ordered. And and yes. ah, goodness, Avestas. She now said, yes. She now said, Pastor Balaji. Immediately she said, before she even said Pastor Balaji, <laughs> I started giving her NLP. Yes. This, that. <laughs> so basically she was just looking at me that, are you a member of NLP? I said, online. I'm a member of Avestas <laughs> yes, online. online member. Not physically for now. She now said, I, I want to go to church. 
how many of you know that we have an online church? Like we recognize our online members, you know, in our church. We know we have members that join us from all over the world, they all over plenty. the globe. Exactly. <laughs> there are plenty. So we, you know, we were enough to reach you. So whenever we have our services, we have people that are always trying to plug you to a small group, plug you to, you know, um, our workforce online. So yes, if you're one of those, make sure you reach out. Go ahead, man. So... When Good Nelson told me, ah, she's she attended um Lekki um church, church physically. Campus. And me, I stay on the mainland, I don't stay on the island. Yes. So but she stay on the island. Mm -hmm. So she was now telling me that ah, if I want to attend physically, that they, they have at Bagada and Tony, mm -hmm. Ikeja. So and I said, okay, I'll look into it. One day I'll try and go to maybe Bagada or and Tony. She now said, okay. I went back home. I was still I still continue with my online services. So the thing just said to me, I have to go to this church physically. Mm. Where this man is. Mm, Live. In my head, I was, like, I was like, let me just, <laughs> at first I said, let me just go once first. So again, I asked myself, oh, how are you going to do it? Now I start going to church on the highland. You start paying tea fee. Mm -hmm. I said, let me still go once. So that once was last two weeks Sunday. Come on now. I found myself in Avestas. Mm. Even when I was coming in, goodness was just coming out. I, 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 came, I came for third service. She did second service. Okay. She's one of the ushers. Amazing. So she was just stepping out. So she gave me a hug. She was like, ah, oh, welcome. So that feeling alone. Mm. You know, it's been long I found myself mm. in such gathering. Yeah. You know, any gathering if I, I found myself basically before now is where they criticize. Oh, mm. she's not up to my level. Oh, she's not up to my class. Mm. Oh, she's not this. Oh, she's not that. So for me to now be in a gathering where... Even those people that make me feel worthless of myself, they are mm. not up to those people that are welcoming, exactly. welcoming me, give me hugs. Come as you are. That's yeah. what we always say in church. Come do, as you are. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. So immediately I stepped in, there's no, ah, she's not as beautiful as us. Yeah. She's not as well dressed as us. As in, even the hushers, ah, oh, welcome to church. Come, come, on, come and sit here. You know, they treat me the same way they treat every other. They don't even want to know. Whether it's 1,000 or that is your balance. Since you are shy in our church, yeah. everybody is the same thing. You're and welcome. That's definitely something with Harvesters. It really is a family. Yes. And it's so crazy because it's such a big church. Yes. But it's such a small church. Exactly. You know, like we we're big on, enough to have you and small enough to reach you. Honestly. And I think one of the things that Pastor B does to really, really um, foster that culture in the mm. church is him standing outside church every Sunday to welcome and greet people. Yes. Honestly, Take that just makes you feel you. like you know, oh, this is One my pastor. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So that's hierarchy. It's not really there. Yes. Everybody is yes. loved in Harvesters. And yes. just wanted to purchase that because it's so true of our that's church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I came for third service. So I know after third service now, I already follow online. So I know little about the church. <laughs> so I know after third service, they will start the relationship talk. So yes. I had to wait. That's fourth service. So it was during the relationship talk mm. when Pastor Balaji was talking again. Okay, this man followed me online and still followed me physically. <laughs> you know, the way he was talking, it was it like throughout from third service, even before he started talking, from third service literally to fourth service, I was crying in my seat. Wow. Like I was just tearing up. Even during um, during praise and worship, I was just tearing up. While he was talking, I was just tearing up. The only thing for me was just to run to that stage and said, man. <laughs> I need to hug you, sir. You've done a lot. Even if I've not gotten to that point as a den, mm. you've done a lot for me. Mm. So basically, when he was asking questions and he was giving people my, in my head, I'm like, me, I'll not share my story here. Mm. Before you know that, they'll start gossiping. You know that meant, even yes, if it has started erasing, it has not finished at that point. Yes. So in my head, I'm like, me, I'll not collect this mic. Let them continue sharing their stories. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I end up raising up my hand. Come on now. And... I had to collect the mic that day and I was sharing my story. I was crying. You know, I, again, it was calm. It had to pause till it was like, I need to be fine. Mm. Like, I've not felt love that way mm. in years, even while I was in my marriage. Wow. wow. So, like, I've not literally felt that way. Mm. Like, number one, I felt welcome. Mm. I felt love. Even the ladies that sat down with me, there's nothing like, ah, look at that. Look at. I asked mm. them questions on the hand side. Even I was jotting some things down. Mm. I was at some point that would sit tell me, sorry, what did he say? Mm. Like that mm. alone means a lot to me that Come day. Mm. Due to what I've faced in the past. So then after then, I can remember that was when Pastor Balaji now called 
Pastor Chinelo that she, uh, she's a counsel, she's a counseling person. She will help out. Firstly, when Pastor Chinelo was coming, <laughs> Pastor, <laughs> <It's> not... <laughs> Sister Chinelo, it's fine. Pastor, Pastor Chinelo, come on now, we see it. <laughs> so when Pastor Chinelo was coming, ha, ah, in my head I'm like. I'm not even worthy of this person, no. Mm. You know that thoughts will always come regardless. So immediately Pastor Chinelli came, the first thing, give me a hug. Ha. So I gave her a hug, she sat down, she said, give me your number. I'll add you to a group. Mm. In my head, I'm like, she does not even know me before. Mm. Like, you know, the love was just massive. Mm. From the pastor, from the members, the love was massive. So I met someone in the church that they do, to Sister Wayne. So she came to me, she said her story was kind of similar to mine, that but she thank God for Avestas, though she has been in Avestas for about a year, a year plus. Mm. That all thanks to Avestas. Even after the divorce, thankfully she found Avestas. She was not in a relationship, mm. but she had that peace of mind. She's happy. So she collected my contacts. Even throughout that week, she's always calling to mm. check up on me. How are you? Hope you're fine. This she even had to pay for a therapy section for me. Hmm. Said you need to see a therapist. Come on now. If that's when you know you'll be fine. She asked, said, okay, you need to join, um, go track. Mm -hmm. yes. So she took me to go track that very Sunday. So I was just like, I was happy. So to my surprise, you no know, coming to Avestas physically, I haven't made up my mind. I want to be coming to Avestas as a church mm. physically. I just felt let me go to Avestas for the first time. Mm. So coming to Avesta physically and just after that Sunday, now I have Monday to Saturday before another Sunday. Yes. My Monday to Saturday after that physical um, service, mm -hmm. hmm. I don't know how to describe it. Come on now. Because even people around me hmm. was now asking me, what, happened? what has changed? Hmm. You are not being aggressive. Come you are now. calm. Come on now. Like within that Monday to Friday, even at work, hmm. a lot of people, you know, when people start saying your bad side, yeah. even if they can't say it to you, they will keep it. They will, like, they will use it as something as gossip. Yes. But there are some changes you will make. Come on now. Even if they don't want to say it before, the choice. changes will be much. They don't have choice. Those are called exponential changes. Yeah. And this is our way of <laughs> undeniable exploits and laughter. The kind of testimonies you will receive that, you know, people will not have to ask questions. They will be sure that it's mm -hmm. God. So I like what she said. She was like, people notice the changes. You don't have to go and explain. Do, did you know that I went to church? No. Even I don't. The even change. I didn't notice the changes myself. Yes. Actually, it was people that noticed on my behalf. Come on now. Before I myself was now start feeling like, okay, there's something really changed. Yes. So you know, after coming to the church physically, and on Monday, I was literally happy. Mm. The things my daughter do before we yell at her. Even at times when she does something, you know, she now, ah, my mom is a yelling mom. Mm. Then she does she that thing. She won't, before I even open my mouth, she will already move back. Mm. So immediately I'm asked, why do you do this? So I, you will see, even though she's a child, even people usually tell me that ah, this daughter is a child, but she has adult mm. brain. Because the way she, even the way she talk, at times she will be the one that will tell me, mommy, that's your sister, it's prayer. Yeah, I do. I, it's almost six thirty here too. At times she'll tell me, "Ah, mommy, let me charge your phone for you." you no, know, six thirty tomorrow. She's so thoughtful. So you, that's the kind of person she is. So at that moment, she will move back. So I think during that week, and I certain um, the idea of talking to her calmly. Mm. So anytime I now talk to her calmly, if she does, then the next thing she will hug me, she will peck me. Aww. You know, I will feel so emotional. I will now, I will now say to myself, "You see, you'll be doing your things wrongly mm. all these years." Just look at the changes within a week. So my question is, where did that change come from? Come on now. That's what I now started asking myself. So let me, for me to be in Avestas for one day physically, hmm. and I can see drastic change I couldn't see in a year. Yes. Ah, no. Then there's no, nothing anybody can tell me. I'm not going back. Hmm. So where I'm not yeah. going, and I, I, don't, I don't care what anybody wants to tell me. Either you pushing to me that you're a Muslim, why will you be going to church? Man. When I was depressed, where are you? Mm, come on now. And again, you know, after service on Sunday, mm. we had to come to Pastor Chinelu's house for oh, our yeah. wow meeting. Mm. It was awesome. It was like even Pastor Chinelu, you know, when you had one thing, one thing again, I want us to know <laughs> is seriously, like even I myself, I learned a lot from my tough time. Mm. and this changing moment. Yes, Pastor Balaji will always ask us, 
what did, did you learn? learn? Yeah. What did you learn? Even on the Sunday she came to church, he kept asking her, what did you learn mm -hmm. from your past? There is always a lesson, lesson to be to learned. Learn. So even in the pain, there's something you have to learn. And to be honest, that is the key yes. to actually unlocking yes. the potentials from whatever you've learned. It's yes. actually recognizing that I've learned. What, what actually seeking those yes. lessons yes. in your pain yes. transforms it from a pain into a message. Exactly. Exactly. It is it's yeah. the key to, you know, going from a mess into a message like yeah. you just said. Yeah. Because literally now, why I'm saying this is, you know, when you go out there, you meet different people. Yes. Before I'm this kind of person, I hurt the way you hurt to me. Mm. If you are good to me, I'm good to you. Mm. If you are not good to me, I'm not good to mm. you. So during my moment, the lesson I learned is, I'm not going to treat anybody the way they treat me because I don't know what that person is going through that is Come making the person else. behaving yes. that way. Mm -hmm. So instead, my, my kind of person before now, I don't know how to say sorry. Mm. But in the last two weeks, I know how many sorry I've said. Come wow. On, this is so profound. As in, you can see how inner peace began to translate life. into a changed behavior. A changed behavior. life. A changed life. life. So I know how many I'm sorry I've said. I met with um, Pastor Yewan and Sister Yewan Day. Mm -hmm. Even Sister Yewan Day, after that Sunday, she had to send me a book and a Bible. That, bro that reminds me, eh? Now she does not know, she felt, okay, I just went to a store. Mm -hmm. I bought that book and Bible. It's a norms, but for mm -hmm. me, it's not a norms. Because in my whole life, this is the first time I'm receiving a gift. Wow. What? Oh my God. I don't want to say it. It's okay. So. It's okay. When I got that gift in the office, like tears just rolled down my eye. Mm. I felt she would feel, oh, uh, she done something of a norms, but no. Mm. Your first time receiving a gift ever wow. in your life. Wow. So. No wonder in church, you know, when pastor would ask you, what, what did your husband buy you? You know, when he she was trying to, yes, yeah, she couldn't say because he had never actually so I'm just grateful. Avestas has really changed my life. She has like I met people that are more than family. Mm. Not, not even family, because at times even what they are doing, your family can't do it. Mm. So I'll tag them as they are more than family. They are just God saints. Mm. <laughs> actually, actually engage mm -hmm. with the with the structures that church has yes. in place so that church can really reach you. Mm -hmm. And then you can really feel the richness of everything that's going on in yes, church. You're not yes. just, you know, a Sunday, Sunday yes. kind of person. And you're part of the community because exactly. that community is very important. That network is very important. That friendship, that love oh. that you're talking about, it's so oh. important. These are things that keep us going. Yes. When, when life happens, when yes. things are tough, you have people to do life with, yes. you know? So it's really important. And I'm so happy she was so open mm -hmm. to joining the small group yes. and coming along to the first meeting. Yes. And she was so, um, vulnerable wow. and i think the environment was just right and that wow. is the thing with harvesters that Come culture of love because that's what leads to that changed life yes. when you feel loved you feel accepted you feel like I'm, i belong here i'm mm. part of this sense of you know belonging. that's it mm. so then it makes you and then the great thing is Harvesters then gives you opportunities to expand on that. Exactly. You know, you could start leading a small cell. Yes. You know, and that then places a demand on you to grow spiritually. Please. So then apart from that growing personally mm -hmm. in your personal life, your spiritual life starts to grow. Yes. And then you start to impact other people yes. and grow other people to impact other people. Yes. So then we just create this ripple effect of yeah, love, please. of greatness, of change, oh. you know, and that's what I love about harvesters. It's and hard. it's so beautiful that most people can identify with that. Most people yes. who belong to harvesters, yes. you can really identify with that, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just what we're seeing happening here. Yes. I'm so happy to, to witness it. So what we're seeing here is a story of a chained life. Someone that, you know, had thought in life. Someone that was at the verge of, you know, losing her mind, literally. She would hear voices in her head. Her, 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 she was second guessing herself. She was self-sabotaging herself. She had never felt loved. You know, she was, she was battered and bruised in her marriage. And she was in a very dark place, if I could say. But, you know, the Lord ordered her step, mm -hmm. you know, till she found our family. Mm -hmm. 
till she came to her vestas and she started to notice the change. I mean, you've heard her story. You've heard how the Lord has brought her from that dark place that she didn't even need to tell people that, you know, I've been going to church, you know, I've been to church, you know, it's just like the woman at the well. But this is a different case because the woman at the well, she had to go and announce in the village is like, come and see a man who told me about myself. You know, but people, you know, are coming to her saying, what's wrong? What's wrong? Something is different about you in the office. You know, you're, you're more calm now. And that's the thing. That's why, you know, in the series where we're discussing dealing with frustration, you know, you know, Pastor, pastorology will help us identify the emotion. First, you need to identify the emotion. You need to tag it. Last week, we learned about what are the lies the devil is telling you. She shared some lies. She, she said the devil was telling her, he'll put thoughts in her head like, oh, you're a Muslim. Why should you be going to church? Your father might be angry. You know, just lies to just isolate her and take her back to where she's coming from. But thank God for our God. Thank God for the encounter with Pastor Bolaji Do with next level prayers. I don't know where you are right now in your life i don't know what voices you're hearing in your head but you need to connect we pray from mondays through fridays 6 30 a.m to eight o'clock it's an amazing time in god's prayers. that's like one of the most powerful prayers we pray word-based prayers but not just praying wishful prayers we will open the word dissect it and we would pray you know we have our services in all our campuses we, you can join us online on youtube you know join a small group our church is big enough to have you and small enough to reach you on the screen now will be barcodes and numbers that you can just contact to join a small group if you know you have that capacity the lord is calling you to leadership you know send a prompt that you would like to lead a small group you can lead a small group online and you can also lead in any of our campuses i want this to be you i want i want the lord to use you to to you know spread the word to others like her Look at how she found her way. We have a strong presence online. So there's no excuse. Join the prayers. Join us on YouTube. Join our services. Join the small group. We would reach out to you. We would love that. You know, I just want to ask you, what is one word? You know, seeing the remarkable changes that you have, you know, you've experienced in a versus through pastorology, the, the way God has reached you and giving you his peace. You know, you said in his word, my peace I live with you, not as the world gives. That is what you're experiencing, literally the peace of God. It changes everything. It is the only thing that can make you, you know, be in a boat and there are storms, but you're sleeping just like Jesus. And that is what you're experiencing. So no, noting that remarkable change you have, what is one word, a strong word you want to give to someone that is or you know is experiencing all that you experienced in the past okay i would like to tell people how there hmm. there is no place you cannot find any comfort anywhere hmm. than from the father above which is on. jesus christ but, but i found my true avestas hmm. and avestas is not just a church hmm. it's a place where you love to be come on because we are, we are one day and they treat everyone as family. Mm. So come be part of Avestas and you'll feel what I'm talking about. You, you will not understand on the, until you feel it. Oh, so them. join Avestas so that you feel it. Come on now. <laughs> I love that. You will not understand until you feel it. So join Avestas and you would feel it. Thank you so much for sticking with us on today's episode on slice it was an emotional session i mean we're trying not to spoil our makeup and everything but <laughs> trust me the story is really deep you want to hear this this is a story of a changed life i am nena rufus and until we we'll come again to you next time you know remember that god is good and kind to you and through you the lord can change lives exponentially bye-bye and thank you, thank you.